It's truly really amazing what you could accomplish if you had more skills. In today's video, we'll talk about the inspiring stories of two business owners who started with little money and grew large businesses that are still standing and winning. They were ready to invest their time and energy in improving themselves because they knew they could be more than they were. So let me share a few quick tales with you in hopes that we can learn something from them. This is the success story of Nebraska Furniture Mart and Enterprise Rent-A-Car. The greatest investor of all time and the oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, shared this story about surviving this inflation. Each of them began with $2,500, which was their entire possession at that time. Rose Blumkin and her husband decided to move to Omaha in 1919. She also admitted that she felt foolish because she didn't know the language at first. When they arrived, she discovered a small community of Russian Jews and immediately felt more at home. Then, her eldest daughter would teach her the word she had learned from school. Rose Blumkin, or Mrs. B, spent 20 years saving her money to bring her parents and siblings over $150 at a time. To fund it, she sold second-hand clothing. She had four children during that time. And 20 years later, in 1937, she had saved $2,500. Mrs. B traveled to Chicago and purchased some furniture. Mrs. B had never attended school even once in her life and had always dreamed of opening a furniture store. With just $2,500 in her bank account and the drive to do it, she built a company that she sold to Warren Buffett in 1983 for approximately $60 million. And that company, Nebraska Furniture Mart, made a $1.5 billion business in 2017. Rose Blumkin, or Mrs. B, worked for Warren Buffett until she was 103 years old. Currently, the fourth generation is still engaged in that line of work. Warren Buffett said that Mrs. B with her $2,500 should serve as a lesson to all Barcher's managers about loyalty and determination. Another interesting truth about her is that she was illiterate and entered the furniture industry without bringing anything special to the table in terms of furniture. However, she was determined to succeed and believed she could outwork anyone. She was always concerned for her clients. Mrs. B built this amazing business while working at extremely low gross margins. Now I'm gonna give you a bag of VSQ 9.95. My price is 6.50. They don't have fashion floor, my prizes. <laughs> okay. They don't have the stock and they don't have the looks. That's why I'm here. Mrs. B runs the largest, the most successful retail furniture store in the country. Sales last year alone were over $125 million. I'm the best operator, not I'm bragging in the country with common sense. I don't know education, books, percentage. I use the old fashioned way, tell the truth, buy right. Sell cheap. Buying cheap and selling cheap did not endear Mrs. B to Nebraska businessmen. They boycotted her for decades, and so did their suppliers and their bankers. I sell too cheap. I went to the bank loan hundred dollars, they wouldn't. I sell too cheap. So I got mad and I said to that guy, You're gonna work the rest of your life for $75 a week. And my kids, each one will have a car in the garage. How do you feel about the people who didn't sell to you in the beginning? I still hate it. You know, the, anybody that does you dirty, you should never forgive and forget. Then Buffett related how he tried to acquire another little firm from a guy who turned him down, which he considered to be extremely sensible. This man was born about eight years before Buffett was in 1922. He was from the Midwest and his name was Jack Taylor. He enjoyed sports quite a bit but disliked school. The company he founded hires more college graduates yearly than any other company in the United States. Buffett said this man was destined for success but was unaware of it. Jack studied for a year in college before quitting. He didn't care all that much about school and he went to the Army Air Force recruiting station when the nation was under attack. He offered to volunteer but was rejected due to his hay fever. 
He then went to the Navy, offered to volunteer again, and was accepted. He was placed on a carrier for aircraft. During World War II, he piloted small aircraft and earned two distinguished flying crosses from the Navy. After the war, he returned to the Midwest. Jack was around 24 years old by then. And what's interesting is that when he returned to the Midwest, he kind of switched between jobs. And at age 35, after moving up in the sales organization, he eventually found work as a used car salesman at a Cadillac dealership in St. Louis, Missouri. When Jack asked his boss if he could join them in the car leasing business, the boss responded, Well, if you'll cut your salary in half and you'll come up with $25,000 that you borrowed, then we can be partners in a car leasing company. He owned seven cars in the car leasing industry at the age of 35. It moved fairly slowly. One thing Jack did was to allow the phone to ring three or four times whenever it rang to give the impression that he was very busy answering other calls when in reality, the call was the only one he would receive that day. His first business venture was a success, but there is a lesson for all of us in that it wasn't going anywhere. With 17 cars at the age of 40, Jack made his decision to enter the rental car market. Hertz, Avis, National, and other companies with hundreds to thousands of vehicles are his competitors. Jack only owned 17 vehicles and they all look alike because he bought them from General Motors or Florida Chrysler. He was also unable to acquire airport locations because those businesses have already sold out. He was adamant that he would provide the client but Jack can provide them with friendlier service than they'd ever seen. So he founded a business and gave it the name Enterprise Rent-A-Car. However, when Jack passed away, his rental car business, which began with those 17 vehicles, was now valued higher than Hertz, Avis, and all other rental car companies combined. Jack Taylor founded the company, and Buffett's close friend, Andy Taylor, who is the son, runs the company. His grandchild is currently employed by the company, making them most likely a fourth-generation alumnus. Jack Taylor did not discover artificial intelligence but was able to succeed because of his determination and genuine service to customers. Any of us, including you, could have gone into those places of business. Jack Taylor lived by the creed, which was customer satisfaction. Working with people and establishing a relationship with them was very important to him. He wasn't able to take care of every car rental, but he did learn the right mindset and character for building good relationships with other people. And what is the essence of these stories? Warren Buffett is telling us that like Jack Taylor, it is about building a relationship with your customer before profit. And like Mrs. B, it's about dedication and hard work. People are not buying your services or product with their money alone. They are buying with their trust. I hope you learned something from Warren Buffett. And if you do, it would be kind of you to share this video with your friends and family to inspire them today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we have new videos. This is your 3 Towers Investing Channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.